Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. My name is Eplash and today we will take a closer look at the 2021 Osiak Bone Reapers Battle Force. If you enjoy the content, consider subscribing, giving a thumbs up, as well as checking the links down in the description below if you want to support Empire of War Games. Alright, let's get into the video. Alright, so today we are looking at one of the Age of Sigma boxes. This is actually the first time the Osiak Bone Reapers are getting a big value box outside of the two-player box called Feast of Bones from 2019 and the Broken Rams box Horex Dreadlands. So if you ever wanted to get into the Bone Reapers with a proper box with lots of variety, now's the time. Alright, before we get into the meat of the video, here is a small disclaimer. I'm somewhat new to Age of Sigmar, I've been playing for approximately 6 months now, but I'm trying my best to research everything before putting it into the script. If you notice any mistakes or have something to add, write it down in the comments, because in the end we are all here to learn, and it includes me. Alright, so let's go over all the units included one by one real quick, before going over the points and savings. First up, the two leader choices of the box, the Bone Shaper and the Soul Reaper. Two solid additions, especially for smaller games as their points cost together are right around 250. Both are not competitive choices right now, but the Bone Shaper is excellent for Casual and Crusade and absolutely playable there. Meanwhile, the Soul Reaper is kind of useless. It's a beautiful model, it just doesn't do much right now. Let's hope that changes in a future FAQ or with the new Battle Tome. I wouldn't have changed anything about the leader choices personally, we already had mounted leaders and a Vokumorgian in the value boxes I've mentioned earlier. And expecting Catacross or Nagash is slightly unrealistic, if not entirely impossible. I also expect GW to fix the Soul Reaper in the December FAQ update or in the new Battle Tome, which I expect to be one of the earlier ones in 3.0, considering the Osiak Bone Reaper's rules, even though they have been FAQ'd are still a little bit wonky. Next up, the meat and bones of the box, the Mortec Guard. You are getting one box worth, so 20, and it's a super solid unit, used a lot in competitive right now, and you probably want to add another 20 once you have painted up the box. There's really not much more to add here, solid battle line unit all around, and it's great that they've included them. Not that they really had a choice. I want Mortec Bowman. Anyway, next up are the Necropolis Stalkers or the Mortis Guard. I'm actually not sure what's up here because while they are one of my favorite kids in all of Age of Sigmar, I don't think they are really good right now because they can't be resurrected since they have 4 wounds. I really hope that gets FAQ'd, either resurrection gets FAQ'd to 4 wounds or they get downgraded quote unquote to 3 wounds but they cost less points or whatever. Then There needs to be some kind of fix to make these guys a little bit more playable. If that happens, Stalkers and Mortis Guard will be absolutely playable, maybe even competitively. Right now, they are slightly awkward to use since they don't count as multiple models either in terms of objectives. The Harvester, meanwhile, is an interesting unit. I have seen it be used as a great, if expensive, distraction unit. It also offers good utility with its healing ability and it counts as 5 models in terms of securing objectives. Not too bad for 215 points. It's definitely playable in casual and narrative games. Meanwhile, it struggles slightly in competitive. I, I'm seeing it in some lists here or there, and it's close to being playable competitively, but it's not quite there. It's a great model, and I hope it will see positive changes in the next FAQ or Battle Tome. And lastly, we have the Mortec Crawler, the only real ranged unit in the Osiak Bone Reapers Battle Tome, although that is rumored to change soon. The Mortar Crawler is a decent artillery piece that can easily be included in any casual army. But as with the Harvester, it struggles a bit in competitive. It is not a bad unit, but it feels like something is missing. Furthermore, even though Relentless Discipline has been fixed, Osiak Bone Reapers still can't make use of regular command abilities, most notably Unleash Hell for the Mortar Crawler. Alright, next up let's go over the savings. As you can see on the table, the savings are rather interesting if I'm correct with the pricing. As I already noted in my first impressions video, the savings here are a little on the low side compared to other battle forces. Thus, I expect the battle force to cost £120 or even lower than that instead of the £125 you can see on the screen. It is just to bring this box in line with the others. 
If we did that, the savings would increase by roughly 3%, which brings it to one third off. And that is basically the territory GW aims for with most of their value boxes. Let's hope the boxes will not be more expensive this year and that 120 pounds is the target. If it costs anywhere more than 130 pounds, it would be highly questionable. Now, last but not least, let's talk about points. So the base points are 1140 points and you can bump that up to 1150 if you take the Immortus card instead of the Necropolis Stalkers. If you want to bump the list down to 1000 points, you could do that by getting rid of 10 Mortec card, but I wouldn't recommend that. Instead, remove the Necropolis Stalkers for a more cohesive list with more battle line. If you are looking to buy this battle force twice, this is how a potential list would look like. Just above 2000 points for ideally 240 pounds GW price or 192 pounds from third party retailers, which would be pretty decent. Now, when it comes to the age old question, should I buy this box twice? The answer is probably. You really do not need two bone shapers or two soul reapers at all. The other stuff is definitely useful multiple times though. What you need to understand is that this battle force is not competitive and buying it twice won't make it too much better outside of the 40 more tech guard you have at your disposal then. So if you have a way to utilize the additional bone shaper and soul reaper for let's say kit bashing purposes, uh, check out this Bruce on the GW website to know what you're working with, then this box might be worth it. But generally you would be better off trying to find the broken realms box and buying that in addition to the battle force instead of a second battle force. This is how a potential list with the broken realms box plus the battle force would look like 1705 points in total and you can easily buy it in Europe at least from what I've seen. I'm not sure about North America though. Expanding from there to 2000 points is insanely easy. Just throw in another box of Mortec Guard and you are sitting at a comfy 1985 points which is ideal. All right, so all in all, this list is a joy to expand. The Battle Force itself has solid units, a wide variety of units. And yeah, you can pick basically any way you want. You can buy this Battle Force twice, although then you have to deal with the Bone Shaper and the Soul Reaper. You can upgrade it with a Feast of Bones half. You can use Horex Dreadlands, which is my preferred way of upgrading this Battle Force. Or you can go for separate boxes. All of them are valid. And if you want any more advice on lists or on how to upgrade the battle force, ask the questions down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. All right, so let's get to the conclusion. I think this box is great for new Osiak Bone Reapers players who are interested in casual or narrative games. The box offers a wide variety of units and gives you a good idea how the army will pilot beyond the battle force. I would generally not recommend this battle force for competitive players as you don't get too many competitive units in the box. Although that might change soonish with the FAQ in December or with the new battle top. Just keep that in mind. The upgrade path is a little bit more complex, even though it is great. You can obviously just go ahead and buy this battle force and whatever else you find cool separately. But if you are trying to save money, the only real way is either to find a Feast of Bones half, as I said earlier, or the Broken Ram's Dreadlands box. And I recommend the latter. Lastly, I like the number of points this box offers, so even though the savings are probably not going to be insane, which I might be wrong on, the points even that out in any case. All in all, I would rate this box at a solid 7 out of 10. It is definitely not the ideal box, and the most important aspect, savings, are not that great if I'm right. So yeah, if you have been looking to start Osiak Bone Reapers, and you didn't like the previous value boxes, this one is definitely a solid start. If you have any questions or opinions on the box, drop them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.